As I get closer to 40, a few lingering questions remain. Will I ever get skinny? Will I ever dress up for one of my videos? Will I ever own a seven-string guitar? Well, I don't have the answer to most of those. But I do have the answer to one. Hello, heathens. Thank you so much for joining the channel again. I am JD Blute. I am a guitarist, a goth, a gamer, and a giant nerd. And today we're going to talk a little bit of guitar. Most specifically, it's an unboxing video. On September 12th, 2020, I will actually be 40 years old. I know. How do I maintain my youthful appearance? I get it. My secret is staying with me. All jokes aside, though, I have always wanted a seven string guitar and for whatever reason, um, I blame awkwardness in my fretting hand. I never set about to buy one. I tried a couple Ibanez's and whatnot, but I never really connected with any of them. And remember, I grew up in the era of Korn's heyday. So like I should be like all over this, right? But I'm not, and that's okay. Part of turning 40, meant that I wanted guitars made in 2020. So my 40th anniversary is there first. You've all seen the Paul Reed Smith SE Custom 24 that I've run around with on my Sundays with Ola. And you are all about to meet my newest edition. It is also a 2020. It was unveiled at NAMM this year. I am so excited. So I'm going to basically shut up and we're going to get going. You saw me holding the box in the intro. You saw me holding it in one hand in the air, so you probably already know that I've had to take a look at this. I was too excited, but I still want to show you. I still want you to feel the same thing that I felt for this guitar. This is a new 2020 Schecter 7 string. I cannot afford the Banshees, so just hold it. It's, it's not that. Actually, when I first discovered these guitars, they weren't even on the website, so that's fun. Let's take a look together, shall we? I was worse at this the first time, too. Thank you, Schechter. All right. Obviously, it's in the box. Obviously, I've looked at it. What you are looking at is the brand new for 2020 Schechter C7 Pro. This is a mahogany body, and yes, it is on the heavier side in terms of weight. Look at that back, though. It is absolutely gorgeous. It has a three-piece neck with two carbon fiber supporting rods in there, which is basically a first for me. And of course, it has the dual-action truss rod. These are Duncan pickups. I forget which ones. They'll be... Overlaid over here has a push pull coil. I don't know how much I'm going to use the single coil to be brutally honest, but uh, you know, it's really nice. Three way blade switch, nothing fancy. Tone knob, love it. String through body design, black binding, burl top. I'm going to put the fretboard in right here because I honestly forget what kind it is, but it just plays amazing. I don't know if you can see this. I'll get that right up close to you there. That is an, uh, what do they call it? A super thin or an ultra thin C shape. Got a 16 inch radius at the bottom. I think the radius stays through, stays true all the way th through. True all the way through. There you go. Not 100% sure of the weight. The website doesn't say it, but it, I mean, it's just beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful to look at. I've been staring at it. I was doing the day job. I have been absolutely staring at this thing the entire time. Oh, right. Obviously, you probably saw. Bolt on neck. Not a space to be found. That's actually the first time I did that. Not a space to be sound. These are regular Schecter tuners. I would have liked to see them put locking, but I understand this is a made in Indonesia. Um, it is a pro series, so you do have, obviously, the upper end of things, but not the super end of things, for, for lack of a better word. 
So these are, I believe, nickel frets. They appear to be, they are indeed glued on. No worries there. They are extra jumbo. Now this is the thing, if you know me, you know I like to hit microphones. But if you know me, you know that extra jumbo and jumbo frets are not necessarily my bag, but I have been messing around with this after work for a little while. And um, this time I don't really notice them. If you've seen my earlier videos, you know that I have a Jackson sort of sitting right over there somewhere behind the PRS. Oh, you can see the headstock, there you go. I have a Jackson over there. You've seen that in a few videos. Those frets actually bother me a little bit. I have no idea why, but anyway, this is about this guitar. Nothing bothers me about this guitar. I've not really had a chance to take it for a tone drive, as it were, just finished work. And just really wanted to play it and look at it. So why don't we find out what it sounds like together right now? If you couldn't tell, that was from my Sunday with Ola submission for the Rift Challenge 17. Drums by Ola, guitars by me. I really dig taking part in that. I did also forget to mention while we were talking about the headstock. Jesus, that is really heavy. You probably can't see it from here, but that is a Graftech Black Tusk XL, which I am probably going to put on every single guitar. This came directly out of the mailman's van, uh, out of the shipping box and then obviously out of this box that we just took off together so it was a little bit out of tune nothing major nothing nothing at all problematic at all but but what i did notice is that when i did the tuning and i had and i adjusted i haven't intonated it yet i don't know if the store set it up or if this is direct from the factory but um the strings move like absolute butter through this nut through this nut <laughs> nut butter i'm having a hard time saying it doesn't specify I have the website open, but I'm lazy. I don't think these are glow in the dark side dots, but I do love the staggered approach, like top for the first 12, bottom for the second 12. It is a 24 fret. What I can say, if I grab a pick and just doodle, not like you've ever seen me play on the 24th fret. Just in terms of feel, Extra jumbo frets, it's a little difficult to get in there, but I'm also completely clumsy as a guitar player. You've seen my videos, but the access is there. It's literally just my inability to do things that makes it awkward. You can definitely get the high access if that's your thing. Passive pickups, I really enjoy that. What I also noticed, I should have done a sound test. We'll do that again another time. Push-pull coil, I'm coming back to that for just a second as I move the microphone, the single coil turns it into almost a gent machine because it just takes away any of the gain. And I am not sure why that happened, um, but it's it was like I had a nice chuggy distortion going on. And again, I haven't really done a tone thing. I just loaded up something and, and jammed through. You know, you want to hear your first chugs. Didn't record, I'm sorry. And then I did the coil tap or the pull tap and wow, what a difference. Overall, this is a long ass unboxing. Uh, Schecter C7 Pro, mine, not yours, but I highly recommend getting one. Retails for about a thousand Canadian. Um, do the math for your own country. Cannot say enough good things about the build quality so far. Also, if you were keen, I had it right here and you probably already saw it and were like, oh, that's a really cool guitar, dumbass. If you're in the market for a seven string, highly, highly, highly 
recommend this bad boy. Thank you so very much. Thank you guys too for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for checking out the channel. If you like what I do, do me a solid and hit me with a subscribe. Ring the bell. If you like this video, if you like this guitar, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite seven string is. I would really like to know. Are you an Ibanez fan? I don't know. Can we still be friends? I'm pretty sure we can. I will see you all in the next video. For now, be safe, be consensual. And if you can't be good, well then sweet Satan on a pogo stick, be good at it.